Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Pungo Paints. I am your host, Trooper6. If you are watching this, I thank you very much for this is my first official video. I have a bunch of shorts uh, on the channel showcasing a bunch of my pieces. But for this, this is going to be a part of a series that I'm going to call Let's Paint. So today we're going to be doing the Cacaridons. The reason I'm doing that is because if you know me, you know that that's what I play. But also if you know me, you know my actual chapter is the Flesh Terrors. Now the reason I'm not playing Flesh Terrors is because another guy in our 40k group is already playing Blood Angels and I didn't want to do Blood Angels and Flesh Terrors like that. I kind of wanted to keep it diverse as much as possible. However, that being said, ironically, there is another guy in our group that's playing Raven Guard. And of course, we all know that the <laughs> Cacaridons are successor chapter of Raven Guard. However, again, that being said, I couldn't say no to the Cacaridons. There were so many others, and I had my eyes on a few, like uh, uh, like the Dark Kraken, uh, just to th throw one out there. Uh, but as far as our group is concerned, we have uh, we have orcs, we have Tal. That same guy is playing Tyranids as well. Uh, we have uh, Chaos Slanesh or Noise Marines, uh, Raven Guard, Blood Angels, as I already said, and uh, we're also going to have uh, Chaos Iron Warriors with with a knight regiment attached to them. Should be interesting. Either way, before I get too sidetracked, so what we're going to be doing here today is not necessarily a tutorial, but kind of just showcasing. Uh, I've had a few requests to do some videos, so I figured, hey, why not? Uh, so you're going to see a few of my techniques. Speaking of techniques, first one I'm going to mention is I, personally, do not paint minis that are fully built. The reason that he is like this right now is because he's fairly open, as you can see. So it shouldn't be too hard to get into the nooks and crannies and everything. It's mainly the soft parts of the armor that are usually a big pain. Luckily, since the Cacaridons are primarily gray, all I had to do was prime them in gray. And what do you know? 90% of my work is done. So, uh, moving on to even more things. As you can see, we've got some special pieces here. I'll address the backpack first just because it probably is standing out to you. So it is quite obviously a sharky backpack. I did put some Space Wolf stuff, a little pendant here, and another pendant here. Just wanted to give it a little bit more of a personal touch, make them look, uh, dare I say, more unique, uh, cultured even. You know, they're hunters. They would have a little bit of prizes. If you've ever seen their their artwork, uh, they're usually adorned in, in some kind of fashion. Uh, I did choose the bolt gun uh, and a Mark III helmet. This is my last Mark III helmet, so it means a lot to me that I'm actually using this. Uh, for these backpacks, though, there was an iron halo that was attached. I cut it off so that I could put this banner on here. Now, the funny thing about that banner is it is gigantic. Now, it, it didn't look that big on the box. But, you know, box art can be misleading. However, I just I find it hilarious that that is that big. But when you look at uh, my heavy intercessors, I did much the same thing. I put a banner on him from the Mark III pack of Tactical Marines. And it's way smaller. They should have swapped. I could swap them, but no. He's already got his 4th Company badge marking up there on the banner. He's staying in 4th Company, D Company, as I call it, Death Company. So, hopefully this boy is going to turn out as good as this boy. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I am pretty pleased with how he came out. Either way. What do you say? Enough foreplay. We just get right on into it. So I'm going to be using this Vallejo uh, black. It's just a basic matte black. We're going to start with the soft bits. That's usually what I start with. Uh, 
and then I try to I try to start with the deep recesses. That way, if I get any oopsies, the next layer up will cover it up. All right. Uh, apologies if you can hear the music in the background. Uh, apparently, I'm a little bit of an odd boy. I've got you know some more hammer painting going on, but I've got Pokemon Lo-Fi in the background because hey, why not? Who doesn't love Pokemon? If you don't love Pokemon, well, then you're wrong. And that's just as simple as that. All right, so. And you're going to have to give me a minute here because this is not how I paint. Until I figure out a better setup, I've got this camera just dead smack in front of me. So. Hands might be a little shaky because I'm having to look around it. But either way, I do want to again take a moment to thank you guys for coming by uh sit back relax maybe paint along with me that'd be cool like a bob ross type of deal i have no idea if this is going to be posted in one video or if i'm going to do it in sections you know kind of like uh kind of like a let's play channel might do it instead of doing you know hour-long videos maybe they just do a little piece here and there uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, due to certain circumstances, I am not going to be able to record another video for probably quite a while. Could be another month. Uh, I should still be able to get some shorts up if I can get some painting done. But that's a case-to-case -case basis. We just got a lot of stuff going on right now. For instance, we are preparing for Tidewater Comic Con. And if you don't know what Tidewater Comic Con is... Uh, don't be shocked. I'm not shocked if you don't know what it is. Uh, it is our personal little Comic-Con down here in the 757. We are located in Virginia, 757. Look it up. And that's where we're coming from you today. I'm coming... Yeah. Whatever. Either way. Alright. So, as I said, we always try to start with... The soft bits. I'm trying to be extra careful. Usually I would have both of those done by now. I'm not the fastest painter, but I mean, hey, this is not a speed painting video. I don't know how those guys do it. And I've tried to paint faster, and guess what? It still took me hours. It still took me hours. And people were able to do it in like 20 minutes, and, and they look great. They look fantastic, which is awesome. Also, good to hell, man. <laughs> You know what I got time for that? I don't. I don't know how you do that. So a few things are going to be out of camera shot, of course. I've got uh, my water cup. <clears throat> I've got a palette over here that's, well, it was dirty as hell, but I cleaned it. I've got all my paints lined up right there. Uh, I will go over them in a minute. I just kind of wanted to jump into it. Honestly, this is like my third or fourth time I've started a video, so we're just kind of gotta go for it there's no other way to do it but to do it that's how it was taught back in the day so we might as well just employ that all right and I'm trying to keep things in camera for you not the easiest so I'm trying to focus you might get some bad angles I do apologize for that Uh, a little oopsie, not a big deal. Like I said, oopsies will happen. I gotta steady my hand a little bit here. All right, oopsies will happen, but that's why you've got backup paint because the next layers will go on just fine. Now, since I've got the blackout, I don't like to waste the paint, and I put a little bit too much on my palette here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the bolter real quick. Uh, if I jump around a little too much for your taste, apologies. Uh, I'm what you call an old school ADHD. Which means I, I was born in the 90s and yeah, I was put on all kinds of stuff and whatnot. Didn't help and here we are still ADHD. Well, not so much HD, it's just ADD these days. I've calmed down quite a bit. Depends. Depends. 
if any of you have ADHD and you notice it in your painting, how does that usually work for you? Because I find myself jumping all over the damn place with this. It's uh, almost maddening because there have been a few times where I finish a piece and then I notice I missed a spot. <laughs> as stupid as that is. But it happens, man. It happens. And hopefully when you miss a spot, it's like uh, really small, so it won't be a big deal. And sometimes I'll see myself just so hyper-focused on something, and then uh, I realize that the next step was just going to cover it, so it wouldn't have mattered. So I was like, what am I doing? Excuse me while I take a closer look at this. All right. So, uh, while we're painting this bolter, uh, I don't know about other people. Uh, I haven't paid too much attention sometimes, but when it comes to this grip right here, I like to paint that a brown to represent wood. Uh, if you want to see it as leather, I mean, sure. I've, I've always thought of it as an old school wood grip, and I always figured in the 40k universe, uh, wood would still kind of be a rarity, even though, I mean, they have millions and millions of planets, so I guess it's not a rarity, but still. Uh, I also come from a Star Wars background where you notice there's never any paper. So I figure, you know, Paper is a thing of the past. Wood is a thing of the past. Obviously, paper is not a thing of the past in uh, in Warhammer. I mean, he's got a banner on him. That had to be made from something. It's not necessarily paper. It's cloth. But either way, uh, they got purity seals. Which usually this sharp sergeant would have uh, a little banner on his... Uh, dangling over his crotch... Kind of like a loincloth. What am I doing? I just get up in there. That needs to be black anyway. But I think I might leave it off of him and put it on another Marine just to dress him up. Because uh, these are firstborns, which I wanted my army to primarily be. Uh, and if you're sensing something, you're not too far off. No, I'm not a huge fan of Primaris. Uh, I take the Gabriel Seth stance on that. However, uh, when it comes to the Primaris, good lord, I love their models. Who doesn't love their models? Just the sheer size of it. I don't know if you don't like the design. I'm not a huge fan of some of the uh, of some of the armor. I don't know. It just it doesn't strike me. I mean, it looks it looks iconic and everything, but it doesn't it doesn't really do much for me. Not like <clears throat> not like the iron armor or the crusade armor. I mean, that stuff that stuff sticks out to me. But that's just me. So what do we got here? I swear, painting like this is a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be. I'm not getting enough paint, and then also it's drying before I can really get it spread. A little crazy. A little crazy. And I'm usually all up in my face. I'm sure when you paint, you look a little ridiculous. I don't paint minis this far away from me, but I'm trying to keep everything in view for you. Otherwise, what the hell is the point? Alright, let's just get up in there. Get up in there because the silver will block that out all right and yeah you know what we're gonna drop the black to right about there just cuz we're gonna make it look like all one piece right there which I believe it is sometimes it's hard to tell on miniatures could just be my eyes though I got some wonky eyes. It's all good. 
Boom, 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 boom. All right. I hope everybody's having a good day at least. I'm um, having an interesting day so far. Not to say that that is bad. It is a good day. I can see where this side is a little different from the other side. Could pose a problem. I could see how they are different. Yeah, I see the little lip there. But hey, it don't matter. It don't matter. Just means we're going to spread it uh, out. You know what? Need paint. It means we're going to spread some stuff out. Uh, if there's one thing I've come to learn when it comes to uh, painting minis is improvise, man. Improvise. That's all you need to do. Go with the flow. Don't panic. I'm also notorious at panicking sometimes. <laughs> Things happen. You get paint where you don't want it, and you just don't want to bother trying to fix that. It slows you down throws your flow off anything really all right so what else really needs to be black here uh, technically those soft parts and I feel like I want a smaller brush this one does get pretty fine but it also is very frayed so I don't know if a lot of people use special brushes or anything if they like a brand uh, if you do, I mean, let me know, and maybe even I'll look into it. But for now, if anybody had ever asked, oh man, what do you what do you use, dude? I don't know. I, I get it off of I get it off on on Amazon. Uh, I don't like to I don't like to spend a whole lot of money on everything when it comes to when it comes to this hobby because well, for one, the models are expensive enough. All right. And uh, you don't always have to go expensive to get quality. You really, really don't. I also will say, yes, you do get what you pay for. But if you know what you're doing, you know how to use it, it'd be all right. You see that? You see that split? It won't focus. Either way. Old dingy brush. <clears throat> been painting with this thing for uh, I want to say two years all right a little mess up right there it's all right we'll come back to that I've got a gray that pretty much <clears throat> matches all of this so bear with me guys hopefully everything stays more or less in focus for you it's, it's hard to keep that in mind because, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm having to look around this thing right now. I can't look through the camera. That would be ridiculous to try to paint like that. <clears throat> and you would see way, way more sloppy mistakes. And that would just drive me nuts. I don't know if it would drive you nuts, but that would drive me nuts. Because then, of course, one, that's more work for me. But two, <clears throat> honestly, I know I'm better than that. No one's above my... Oh, a little dirt on the brush. No one's above mistakes. Keep that in mind. Uh, it happens to everyone. Professionals, amateurs, everyone. Hmm. I'm just not getting enough paint. All right. Bear with me, folks. Okay. Oh, man. Tell you what. Yesterday, as some of you might have seen online on Instagram, uh, I came home with a Mephiston. Man, this is way more sloppy than I ever do. Uh, I came home with a Mephiston now. I've wanted a Mephiston for a long time. And I am not going to paint him conventionally, meaning I, he's not going to have all red armor. Uh, what I honestly plan on doing with him is going with uh, a flesh tone. I'm going to make the 
bulk of his armor uh, fleshy, uh, red pauldrons of course, and probably a nice good flesh terror red or a nice crimson. I, some people say maroon. I, I like to think of it as crimson. It doesn't really matter. Either way, uh, his cape and everything, nice, a nice deep red. Excuse me while I hit my vape. Don't vape, kids. Bad for you. Stupid, stupid habit. All right. It is carried on and uh, trying to keep things, of course, cohesive in my army. So I'm not going to forget these knees. It's also important when you have that much paint on the brush to try to spread that stuff out. Don't just go right back into it, into your palette, to try to grab more paint just yet. Just spread it out, man. There's more of it there than you think. It's when it dries up like that, that's when you can go back. And I always try to get just a little bit, a little bit, you know. And I've noticed that thing where where painters the uh you know they they dab some paint then they do a little streak on their thumb then they go into it. Honestly, I don't know what that's about. I've never bothered to look into it. Never bothered to ask anybody about that. Uh, when it comes to the little streak, I will do that on the palette. All right, time for the other knee. And when it comes to the oopsies, like I said, I've got a nice gray here that I can use. It's not on the table. I guess I was feeling a little cocky when I was pulling out the paints. Uh, and if I'm being honest, it's it's usually because I don't, I, I really don't need it out. I don't know. I, I don't want to seem. Uh, like I said, cocky or anything. Uh, but yeah, I, I usually don't need it. Uh, I'm, I'm painstakingly slow. Because uh, usually I can only paint at night. When you have a family, you spend time with your family. You don't sit there and paint. However, that being said, of course I, I want to do this for for a living. This is absolutely what I want to do. But if it was my job, then I could, you know, sit there and paint. And see the family, you know, in breaks, after work, everything like that. Because at that point, it would be my job, so there would be no difference. It'd be just the same as when I was working for any other company out there. It's almost time to clip this brush. And these are the new brushes. These are the new ones, man. The new ones don't have any colored uh, tips at the bottom. Whereas my old ones, my old ones do. But man. All right. And I I am going to leave that, that elbow plain for now. Uh, honestly, I'm probably not even going to come back to it. Either way, though, what do we got left? look at this thing I think I'm gonna leave it alone usually I do black on the back but this is a this is a very different backpack that I'm used to so I think I'm gonna leave that alone so the only other pieces that should need some black right now I want to touch something up real quick right there right in there Right in there. Come on. Come on. Get it. Get it. Man, this brush is frayed. It drives me nuts. All right, so I still need to do the uh, eye lenses. I paint them black for cacaridons. That's just what I do. Honestly, I don't remember if they have a certain color, uh, like red or yellow or green or whatever it might be. I don't know. I cannot remember. And I want to say that's not my problem right now. Because it's you can paint your army however the hell you want. It's part of the lovely thing about 40k. 
I do try to keep things somewhat lore accurate. Uh, that is why I have these special kinds of pieces. That's why I like to use older marks of armor. That's also why I didn't want uh, Primaris to be a major part of my army. However, until I figure out how to build a better army on Battlescribe, I couldn't have uh, two or three, even, uh, tactical squads. Um, uh, there weren't a lot of options either. At least that I could see that I was willing to try and do. So I just kind of went with uh, the Intercessors. Uh, now they're Kakaradon, so I went with some Assault Intercessors because these guys love love to get up and close and brutal all while they are silent as the night. Honestly, this is way more challenging than I thought it would be. Uh, I was going to I was going to have a different setup going, uh more of a top-down look. But I thought that was going to look weird, so I tried I tried moving it and the arm just would not cooperate. So I got out this ring light. So we're going to try this. And uh until one day I figure out a better setup. Uh this will just have to do for now. But I can see, as I'm taking a couple of looks at the camera, that a lot of stuff is just not coming out all that clear for you. And I do apologize. I am going to try to keep up on that. <clears throat> Either way. Let's see. Sorry if I also have to clear my throat a lot. Uh, I don't usually talk this much. If you know me, you're probably laughing. You can go to hell. I would say these days I don't really talk that much uh, like at home I guess my wife she, she gets driven nuts by it I find it slightly funny not gonna lie alright a little bit of oopsies on the outside but that's okay so what we got here mm. as you can see that's kind of blotchy not what I wanted really not what I wanted I wanted it smoothed out so I'm trying 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 I might streak it but hey not everything's perfect and I'm not getting paid to do this this isn't my profession just yet I consider it to be my profession let's face it <clears throat> and my brush is just a little too crazy so I don't know if anybody else has to deal with this I'm sure you do how it just curls at the end as my wife she's a painter she says she just clips it and I thought about doing the same so yeah we're going to clip it give myself a nice little straight edge again <sighs> Hopefully that works. It won't focus, so it doesn't matter. Either way. All right. We are good on the black for now, which is almost a shame there's still too much on my palette. Doesn't really matter. But what should we move on to? You know what? I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint that leather strap. Let me get my brown out real quick. I totally forgot about that. Usually I have all my paints out. If I can find it. There it is. All right. Now, as you can see, back here, I've got a Vallejo, I've got some Army Painter, and I've got some Citadel. I'm not exactly one of those people that only uses the one brand. I've seen quite a few people out there that are like, oh, nope, I'm only Citadel, or Army Painter all the way, or Vallejo all the way. I've, I've actually seen a lot of the Vallejo fans out there. I personally don't care. Uh, I use whatever works. Um, when I first started really miniature painting, 
I bought a huge pack of the Army Painter stuff, and I haven't looked back because it's still here and it's still lasting me. Whereas, I don't know, I'm, I haven't really had much problem with the others. Like Citadel and whatnot. Although my Abaddon Black did dry out, but that was not exactly the company's fault. That was my fault. <laughs> I forgot to seal it all the way once, and uh, it was a while since, until I used it again. But either way, so uh, for the little leather straps, right, for the uh, teeth right there on the back of the backpack, we're going to go ahead and use some oak brown. The reason I do that, one, it's not so runny. The other ones, like the uh, fur brown or the leather brown, like I should be using for this leather strap, it's it's a little thin. It's a little runny. Even when I'm shaking it up and mixing it up and everything, it's it's just, it comes off not the best for me. At least I haven't learned how to work it. So we kind of just use what we use and then when it comes to making it look at look a little different I'll use I'll use the uh, the other browns and I will dry brush in the other colors to give the other effects so like the leather I'll use the leather brown and then on the wood I actually do use the uh, the fur brown because I feel like it gives a nice contrast for the grainy effect now this might be a challenge getting in here. Like I said, I usually don't paint fully put together minis. And you're not even going to see most of these little details anyway. But it makes me feel better to do them. <laughs> and let me make sure. All right, so we are going to touch it up a little bit in there. Add more just to make that really solid in there. All right, and since we got the brown out, we are going to go ahead. Ah, see what I was talking about earlier? I forgot about the uh, about the grip. It's okay. It don't matter. All right, I need more brown than that. Come on, man. Come on, man. Like, uh, like one of my old bosses used to say, come on, man. He used to say that all the time. It's funny as hell. If he's watching, what's up, man? You know who you are. I try to be wary of saying people's names online. I mean, first name ain't really going to hurt people, but still, I like to try to exercise some kind of caution. Da -da -da -da. Um, although my mind just went to somebody. Um, so I have an Etsy shop where I've been posting a few of my minis, not everything. Uh, some things I'm unwilling to part with and others... I don't feel like they're good enough. Either way, uh, my first ever customer, uh, I'll give him a little shout out. Again, I'm not sure if I want to say names. Uh, either way, uh, first of all, thanks, man. You. You were awesome. But yeah, just, just uh, thinking about random people out there made my mind jump to him. I need to take a closer look at this. All right. So, I hope he's doing well. His Mortifactor should be, uh, should be arriving tomorrow. I'm recording this on a Tuesday. I shipped it yesterday. It should be there tomorrow. Should. Should. We all know how packages can be. Alright, so what I'm doing right now actually is stupidly 
trying to get some brown in there. And I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting that sometimes you just don't need to paint even the, even the little, little tiny cracks and crevices only if you're going to be maybe cheating. Maybe. I don't even know if you would consider that to be cheating, honestly. Uh, I certainly, I certainly use it. If it's cheating, well, sue me. It's cheating. I don't care. Uh, I don't know. What was I thinking before the brown? Right. We were going to look at some of that bone because there's not much. So we're going to be grabbing the skeleton bone. I'm sorry that I wasn't, uh, no, no, no. I've stayed up on that. I almost thought I wasn't showing the paints. I'm like, duh. All I've used is black and brown. All right. So just a little bit of bone. Yeah, uh, I've seen people when they when it comes to bone, they paint things white, and I'm like, you know, not uh, does does all of the bone have to be polished? Why can't it have that bone color? I mean, hell, it's called skeleton bone. That that shade right there. So why not why not keep it that that weird kind of beige? I'm not a huge fan of beige either, but still. Let's get some of this going, though. Instead of dilly-dallying. Slap it on there. The last time I used one of these skulls was actually on that heavy intercessor sergeant. Uh, there is one glued to the center on the back of his backpack. Just kind of wanted to showcase that he had, you know, killed it. He got it. And if people, not saying people would, but if anybody was like, uh, like, hey, man, that that's clearly Space Wolf stuff. But I'm like, okay, so maybe they went there. Maybe they went to their hunting grounds. And don't tell me the Space Wolves will know. These are Caradons, man. Even they don't know where the rest of their fleet is. Speaking of Kakaradon, so if if you haven't read any of the Kakaradon books, I don't know if anybody out there reads the lore. Uh, anything from Black Library. Good lord, the Kakaradon stuff is fantastic. So far, my favorite one is Red Tithe. And that, of course, is where they face off against Night Lords. And, oh man, that is a treat. That is such a treat to witness and to read. Ugh, that was so good. It's so good. That's that's mainly why I like to uh, believe the fan theory that, um, that Kakaranons are not just Raven Guard successors, is that they actually have a gene mix. However... Since the Kakaradons have been at this for about 10,000 years, means they are a second founding chapter, which means they most likely don't have a mixed gene seed. Even though they are listed as an unknown founding, they have been many times referenced to going back that far. I mean, they talk about the Forgotten One. Uh, dude's name escapes me right now, but pretty much he was the guy who was in charge of the Raven Guard until uh, Korax showed up. And then kind of, you know, exiled. Boop, boop, get out of here. And it said he went on to found them because he also went by a title called Shade Lord. And guess what? That's what Tyberos goes by. Since I just cleaned my brush... And I just looked at it. We're going to go back and we're going to do this grip. We're going to make that wood since I didn't paint it black. And see? No biggies. No biggies. I could have been real cheap and said, nah, man, we're going to keep that gray because good care dons. But nah, we're going to make it. We're going to make a wood. Just keep it good. All right. Now, I don't know if anybody's watched uh, Bob Ross, but you know, 
when he's like cleaning his brush and whatnot, and then he's like, -la 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 -la. who doesn't love that part? It's fun. It's what I do every time I wash my brushes. All right, with all of that, um, what do you say? Oh, I kind of need to do those teeth. But what I was thinking is moving on to the next color. Uh, and speaking of these colors, you see that Warlock purple that's back there? So that was going to be for, uh, what am I thinking? Uh, purity seals. I don't really use red for purity seals. I like to use that warlock purple, which is pink. I don't know why they call it purple. Then again, my wife has called me colorblind. And uh, I don't think she's wrong. I'm just saying. I see pink. So whatever. But uh, yeah, I use pink for the wax instead of red. Uh, I did use red last time, however... Uh, last time I did one, but that was honestly just so I could mix it up for my own sake. Apologies, I knew I was way over there. Alright, get some nice teeth. Get some teeth! Teeth on that bad boy. Alright, make that pop, and then we'll dingy it up later with the Nuln Oil, aka the Cheat Oil. Shading, shading, shading. Everywhere. Get it while it's hot, right? Alright. So, we're going to leave the, this banner gray, alright? Because the uh, the other little banner that's on top of it is, of course, going to be painted with mummy robe. So, I don't go with white when it comes to parchment. I always go with the mummy robes. It has that nice off-white coloring to it. And then if you want, you can edge highlight with white. Uh, I've never really been good at edge highlighting. I've always preferred dry brushing and even well, plus I just keep messing it up, man. I just keep messing it up. I am going to need some matte white though. I should have got that out. Sit right there. So the matte white, of course, is going to be for uh, the mask of his helmet. Now, Cacaridons, depending on who you're looking at or who's even painting them, their helmets are going to be primarily gray. And then that face guard to me, should be white. Makes it stand out. Now, I've I've always wanted to try it. I was going to leave it gray, but then I was going to paint white uh, fangs like a maw. Uh, we are not going to be trying that here today, just because I'm at a weird angle. Honestly, I'd rather just keep this straight up, straightforward. We'll go at it like that. But you know what? Since I've got that white out, <clears throat> Let's go ahead and break it out after I shake it up a bit. It doesn't get much use. Get a tiny dab. Tiny dab. <clears throat> Alright. Now, I've been using this brush a lot, and I know I've got so many other brushes here, but it's one of my shortest ones, and now I've just cleaned it up, so... Everybody's got a favorite brush, don't lie. Now with this white, I'm probably going to have to put two coats on here. Maybe. And if you've noticed, I haven't talked about thinning out my paints. Uh, it's because I don't. I know it's an amateur move not to. Uh, sometimes I like to challenge myself in really dumb ways. At least I'll try to convince myself that it was a challenge to myself. <laughs> I'm like, alright, can I do this in a dumb way? Can I do it, though? I don't even know if it's honestly considered a dumb way. It might be. It might not be. I think it's probably just going to come down to and to the old uh, to each their own kind of factor. <laughs> Alright, come on, buddy. Uh, more paint. Yep, sorry. Got that Pokemon in the background. I'm actually listening to some Pokemon uh, lo-fi. 
if anybody is curious, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I am a huge music fan. Uh, for instance, one of my favorite things to brag about is back in 2019, I had the honor and privilege to see 22 shows. I am working on something about all of that uh, to, sh to showcase all of that. That'll be something separate. I don't think it belongs here on this platform uh, with this channel, I mean. All right. Yeah, I'm just drying up that. So as you can see, it's a little dark right there. And the rest of it is getting a little white. It got a little bit into the into the cracks and crevices. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'm going to try to get some more into the other two just to even it up. But the shade oil is going to get in to those cracks anyway. Come on. Come on. I'm still trying to spread that white out. White has always been a difficult paint for me, and I'm sure if I thinned my paints out, I probably wouldn't have this problem. But like I said, I challenge myself in stupid ways. Uh, my dad would probably laugh. Yeah, there he goes again, doing it the hard way. And I got a little bit of white on, on the eagle. Not a big deal. I actually paint my eagles white. For him, I might do a bronze. I'm not sure yet. Just because the, the helmet is just so white right there. And the only other example from my Kakaradons that I have, he doesn't have an eagle on his chest. Now, if you want to go more accurate, I should have used my Exacto and taken that off. Because Kakaradons are not known to show the Aquila. That doesn't mean that they're not loyal. Or less loyal than anyone, actually. They are extremely loyal, punishingly loyal. But they're more known for wearing other types of armor. And there's my only other example. Now, you see how glossy he is? That was with a matte finish. Now, the dumbest thing was... I forgot to shake up the tube. So it came out glossy. That I used just way too much. So... I think I could just go over them and uh, try to fix it, but sometimes I like to leave things as they are as a reminder to myself to do better next time. As you can see, even on the base, the base is all sloppy with that. So that I'm probably going to fix, just because that is splotchy and drives me nuts. Even the pauldron is not exactly centered. It's a little on the back side of that pauldron. Doesn't matter. But hey, how do you like my backpack? A little quad vented Mark III backpack? Sexy stuff, right? Love it. Love it. Either way. <clears throat> We're almost getting carried away with ourselves here. All right. What else we got? We're approaching on a 50 minute mark. And as you can see, we don't even have much done. This is what I was talking about, folks, when it comes to being a slow painter. So, we're probably going to cut this video, uh, just for everyone's sake. Uh, I'm probably going to take a small break here. I only have a few hours to myself. Uh, seems to be about 12.30, so I should have about three more hours-ish. Uh, <laughs> for anyone who might be wondering, like, really? that You sound a little hesitant? Yeah. So I can be a slow painter, as you've seen, but I'm also dealing with a weird situation here. Like I said, I've got, I've got the camera smack dab in front of me, and uh, I'm having to look all off to the side over here. It's, it's, it's bonkers. It's a little bonkers. But either way, let's get a close-up look of him before we call it a day. <clears throat> you can see some of the splotches. I forgot to get the inside right there. Not a big deal. The white is all blotchy. We will be fixing that, not to worry. Even the brown, that is all blotchy. Going to be fixing it, but that's okay. These first steps are not meant to be picture perfect all the time. The little hose right there could be a problem for me on this side because I usually paint stuff like that silver. We'll see. <laughs> 
I could even just leave the other one alone. Apparently I got some white over there. Or it rubbed off. Could be the... No. I got white over there. Alright. Either way. I will see you guys on the next round. And until then, uh, stay safe. Keep painting. And I usually say on my, uh, on my Instagram out there, on Pungo Paints, may the Void Father guide your brush. Until next time, folks. Take it easy.